never speak, um, preach, ever in my whole life that I can remember that I wasn't afraid when I get up there. I feel like um, there's not a chance I'll ever make it through. And yet we do make it through and, um, and it turns out all right. But what I'm dealing with today is a subject so grand and so wonderful that it puts a special and a very heavy uh, feeling of, of intimidation and uh, just wonder that we're allowed to speak on such a subject at all. I introduced a subject last week uh, had to do with praying in the Holy Spirit. The text is found in John 20, in Jude 20 rather, Jude 20. There are no chapters in Jude, uh, it's so short it's just verses. And so it's found in the, the 20th verse. And the phrase I'm looking at is praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. And so we're endeavoring to find out what that means and uh, and what we should be doing, how we should go about it. Uh, it's, it's truly an awesome subject, just one that's way, way beyond our understanding. And kind of a great privilege, an enormous privilege, just to be able to talk about it in a addressing way. What we learned in our first message on the subject was that though there are many different kinds of prayer, there's one, uh, in one respect, there's one that they're all alike, is their true prayer, and that's prayer in the Holy Spirit. There's private prayer, there's public prayer, there are loud prayers, soft prayers, there are wept, prayer, wept prayers, there are derogatory prayers in which are condemning the enemy and that sort of thing. Many, many different types of prayer. And we talked about uh, two things that we could do, that we should test our prayers. Uh, the test really is, are they in the Holy Spirit or not? Because if we do not pray in the Holy Spirit, we're not really praying. That message comes through very clearly. We test our Holy Spirit, our prayers in that way. Are we really praying in the Holy Spirit? And then we try to give you an incentive or an encouragement or a tonic, as it were, to pray in that way. So I want to go on now, and I want to use the text in some more ways. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Is it not wonderful? Is it not extraordinary? Is it not amazing that God should allow us a privilege of speaking to Him in that way, praying in the the Holy Spirit, God the Spirit. It's a wonderful thing. I'm going to use the text first of all as a kind of map, something in which we can get some directions in prayer from. Let me ask you right now, how do you pray? How do you pray? You pray by the book. Some people pray by the book. They read prayers uh, from books that are published. I remember when I was a boy in high school, I think I told you this last week, that we always started our day with uh, a prayer read from the Anglican Book of Common Prayer. And some of those prayers are just grand, really wonderful. Well, asking, do you pray by the book? Do you pray without a book? Are you prepared to pray in public or are you not prepared? Do you pray in private? Surely, above all other things, you pray in private. Do you pray in your house? Do you pray on your way to work? What posture do you use when you pray? Do you stand? Do you, are you lying in bed or do you kneel by the bed or whatever it might be? What's your posture? The interesting thing is that in this text of scripture we have here, nothing is said about that at all. Nothing said about the way that we pray or the posture we pray. It simply says praying in the Holy Spirit. And there's no instruction except that one, that one instruction, praying in the Holy Spirit. Apparently, that granted, granted that we are praying in the Holy Spirit, nothing else matters. It's the one indispensable thing in prayer, that we pray in the Holy Spirit. If we're praying in the Holy Spirit, we may do anything else as we will. Now you say, well, does that mean I can go off and do something off? No, no, that wouldn't be praying in the Spirit. If you're praying in the Spirit, everything else will fall into place. So. What does the text mean then, praying in the Holy Spirit? It can mean, there are alternate translations, it may mean praying by the Holy Spirit. And that's correct, praying by the Holy Spirit. When prayer is real, when it's genuine, it's prayer in the Holy Spirit. Another translation, just as accurate, is praying through the Holy Spirit. So praying by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit's power, or praying through the Holy Spirit, which means the same thing. Let me talk a little bit about praying in the Holy Spirit's power. It's something which 
the unregenerate person, the unbeliever, knows nothing about. In fact, he or she may laugh at Christian prayers. They know nothing about it. They might as well be often some ways terrible as, as to, to know this. But regenerate people, regenerate people, people who are aware of the fact that there are communications between God and man, they know something of what it means to pray in the Spirit's power. Here's what it says in Romans 8.15. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption. So apparently in prayer we're feeling we're adopted by God, brought right into his family. A spirit of adoption by which we cry out, <clears throat> Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Do you understand that when you're praying in the Spirit, the Spirit bears witness with you, testifies with you that you are a child of God himself. Now as I say, regenerate people know something about this. It happens sometimes with sounds, sometimes it happens without sounds, but it casts a spirit on God's influence, the Holy Spirit's influence over us. So I'm speaking to Christian people now, and I'm saying that this is something that every Christian knows something about. Can't explain it exactly, can't describe it exactly, and yet you know what I mean when I say that we feel close to God, children of God, through prayer, when the Holy Spirit works in our life in that way. Because it's the Holy Spirit who excites our spirit to activity. I find it hard to explain, but I know this, that I as a man, if I were left without the Holy Spirit's influence, I could not pray properly at all. Whoever drinks of the water, says the Lord Jesus, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, never thirst. But the water I shall give him shall become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. Now that's the Holy Spirit working. And the Lord Jesus says, if we pray, pray in his name, that's what's going to happen to us. This power may be possessed and should be possessed by every single Christian. We should all know what it means to pray in the Holy Spirit. So may God grant it to all his people now that they may all know what it means and experience what it means to pray in the Holy Spirit. That's one meaning of the word. But praying in the Holy Spirit also means praying what the Holy Spirit gives us to pray about, that he gives us to pray about. That is to say, the content of our prayer, the matter of our prayer. Sometimes we don't know what to pray about. We don't know what to pray for. I can remember back at Scarborough Church of Christ, and it happens here too, but I remember very distinctly there that we have our prayer services on Wednesday, and sometimes when you start the prayer, it'd be a long time before anybody said anything. And the reason was they didn't know exactly or they were thinking about what they should be praying concerning. When I'm alone, I think it's not a bad thing before I start to pray to think about it for a while to meditate on it a while. What do I need to pray about? And allow God this opportunity, if I can put it that way, if I give God this opportunity to suggest to me what I ought to be praying about. I have had in my life some interviews with very important officials. I talked uh, several times to the Prime Minister of Southern Rhodesia back in his day, the Honorable R.S. Sir Garfield Todd. He was a good friend of our family. And I remember that as a young man, I never talked to him without thinking about what I was gonna say. What do you talk about to a man like that? Well, we should do the same thing and even more so with regard to prayer to, to God, prayer in the Holy Spirit. So when you pray tonight or whatever time it is, especially if your devotional prayer Give yourself some time. Give yourself some time to think about it and meditate on it. And ask God, ask God the Holy Spirit what you should pray about. Here's what Job said. 
I think that I preached on this not too long ago, so you might remember the verse. But Job, you remember, had lost his farm, he had lost his family, he had lost everything but a wife who said to him, why don't you curse God and die? That's all that he had. And so here's what he said about that. He's talking about prayer. He says, oh, that I, might, I knew where I might find him, that I might come to his seat. I would present my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. Now that's good. That's good. I'm going to read it again. Oh, that I knew where I might find him. He's talking about approaching God as a judge, someone to whom we can talk and has the power to do something for him, a judge. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would present my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. In other words, I think it's not a bad idea to wait on God, ask him to reveal to us what we ought to be praying about. What I'm asking you to be careful of, beware of hit or miss prayers. Just praying off the top of your head, no thought, no meditation, no direction, just a haphazard prayer, if we can put it that way. I should be coming to the throne of grace intelligently. I should come to the throne of grace understandingly. It's a wonderful position to be in when the Holy Spirit guides your thoughts in prayer. I'm asking if you know anything about that, praying in the Holy Spirit. Spiritual people are often aware of the fact in their prayer that someone is guiding them, someone is leading them, someone suggests, oh, I need to remember this in prayer. Someone leading them and guiding them in their prayer. What's needed most of all is greater sensitivity to the Spirit's influence in our lives. I wonder how many of us as Christians ever really think about the Holy Spirit's influence in our lives. There was a great saint last century whose name was Thomas Shillito, and he said that he wished his mind would be like a cork on the water, which is to say responding to every breath of wind. His mind like a cork on the water. What I'm saying is that you've reached a high state when God the Holy Spirit and our own spirit are in perfect harmony, when they're in perfect accord, when they're in perfect agreement. We seek that. We seek that when we're praying in the Spirit. I pray that we might be led into that kind of guidance and that kind of action. Now once while I'm at it to note the uh, danger of praying selfishly. If we don't think about our prayers in advance, we might pray just selfishly for ourselves. What we want, what we wish for, willful prayer. I'm sure we know something about that in terms of our own experience. Is it wrong to pray for ourselves? Is it? No, it's not. We just need to see what we're, think about what we're praying about with reference to ourselves. Uh, I think people pray on <laughs> some very strange subjects sometimes in terms of things they want. Here's what Paul says. He says, be anxious in nothing. Be anxious in nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you keep that element in your prayer, thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts in your minds in Christ Jesus. So we're not anxious, that's why we don't pray for ourselves all the time, but we want God to lead us and to guide us in our prayer. So we say then, Lord, teach us to pray. We need to be taught to prayer. It's not just something that comes off automatically. We ask the Holy Spirit to guide us in prayer. Our thoughts and our desires and our very words, that the Holy Spirit might guide us in these matter. We don't want to pray in the flesh. To be praying in the flesh is not to pray at all. I can illustrate this in the most powerful way. The Lord Jesus, when he was on trial, when he was about to be crucified, he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, not my will, but what you will to God. 
In other words, he first of all prayed and he wished and he hoped he didn't have to go through this. But when he got down to it, he said, not what I will, but what thou wilt. So what we're really talking about here is praying in the way that the Holy Spirit leads. Praying in the way that the Holy Spirit indicates. Because I want you to know, there are many ways of praying that are obnoxious to God. And they're offensive to God. Selfish prayer. Prayer that arises in anger, which is not righteous anger. This kind of thing. There's only one way, only one way of praying which God accepts. And you know what it is. It's praying in the Spirit. Here's John 4, verses 23 and 24. Here's what he says. This covers our time. An hour is coming, and now is, so it's right now, when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth in truth. So that tells us how we ought to be praying and what we should be doing. We, what it really means is, it means fervent prayer. Not just prayer off the top of our heads, but fervent prayer. Prayers that we're really involved in emotionally and spiritually. I've never seen a fire yet that's lukewarm. You ever seen a lukewarm fire? Well, I've never seen a real prayer yet that's just lukewarm, a genuine prayer. I've sometimes, I'm a privileged man, you know, and you're privileged too, but privileged in the sense that I have heard prayers that are just extraordinary. I've heard amazing prayers in my time, prayers by great men of God, and they could just go on praying forever and ever, and you'd listen awed and, uh, and just completely taken in. Well, I wish that we could pray that way. The way to start praying that way or getting toward that is praying in the Holy Spirit, asking God to lead us and to guide us in the things that we pray about. Unforgettable prayers. There's a way of praying with power in which the person seems to get a hold of the posts of heaven's gates like Samson did. Do you remember? He broke down the, 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 the gates and carried them off into the hills. Here's a very brave vow, a very brave vow. Here's what Jacob said when he was afraid of losing his son Esau. He prayed to a person called the angel of the Lord. Now, I think it was the Lord Jesus himself, the angel that one sent of God. And here's what he said. I will, not, this is a prayer, this is a brave prayer, but it's a good prayer. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. That's extraordinary. And God didn't let him go until he blessed him. Jacob didn't let him go until God blessed him. So that's what we mean by praying in the Spirit, but it means even more. It means praying perseveringly, not just giving up, just not giving up something off the side and we forget all about it. If we pray about it, it ought to be important. So we pray perseveringly. We pray in a holy state of mind. You can't go to God in prayer when you're preoccupied with something which is not holy. In a holy state of mind. Praying humbly. There's no such thing as proud prayer. Praying humbly. Praying lovingly. We love Him because He first loved us. It means praying faithfully. That's something we do just as a off the cuff thing now and again. No, no, it's a regular thing that we uh, devote ourselves to, to praying to our loving and wonderful God. Perseveringly, in a holy state of mind, humbly, lovingly, faithfully. Let me use the text as a kind of announcement, a kind of announcement, praying in the Holy Spirit, a blessed announcement. It's an announcement to proclaim our success in prayer. Because if you're praying in the Holy Spirit, you are succeeding in prayer. Wonderful words, praying in the Holy Spirit. Apparently, with that kind of prayer, 
it's an absolute certainty that I must succeed with God. Did you get that? If I pray in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's guiding my prayer, it's an absolute certainty that I must succeed with God. If there's anything we need in our personal lives, it's anything we need in our church, if there's anything needed in this country, it is that we succeed with God. We need His help. Because if the prayer is simply my own, well, it's not going to get any higher in the ceiling. It won't. But if the prayer I offer is God's will written on my own soul, I'm going to get an answer, the answer I'm looking for. There's an old saint that said that prayer is the shadow of God. And so it is. When you pray, if you're praying in the Holy Spirit, God is there. The Creator is there. Prayer is the shadow of God so that our will, when the Holy Spirit influences it, is a certain indicator of God's will. You've got the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. When we pray in the Spirit's will, we are praying according to the will of the Father and our prayers are going to be answered. They'll be answered. The prayer that you offer in the Spirit is a shadow of the coming blessing. You'll get what you're after if you pray in the Spirit. When people start praying, you know, I mean, when they really start praying, um, well, it, it, it foreruns revival itself. And some of the great revivals of history, all the great revivals of history, have come because of people's prayer, people united in prayer. When people really start praying, <laughs> boy, I'll tell you, you, don't, you really don't know what a wonderful thing is going to happen. So, if we pray in the Holy Spirit, if we pray in the Spirit, we are praying according to the will of God. And if we pray according to the will of God, he never, ever contradicts himself. Listen to this. This is Romans 8, 26 and 27. And in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray as we should. Did you get that? Not me saying that. It's the Scripture saying, you don't know how to pray as you should. I don't know how to pray as I should. We do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us. He takes what we, He's like a, a divine secretary, takes what we say and gives it to God in a fashion which is totally pleasing to God. The Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because He intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Spirit Himself intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. That's extraordinary. Seems to go around in a circle. What it means is though, that if you're praying in the Spirit, you're bound to be heard. And your prayer is bound to be answered. If you pray submissively, you may not get what you ask for, but you'll get an answer to the prayer that's better than what you were thinking about and better than what you were praying about. Extraordinary. So you can rest assured that you cannot help but succeed in prayer when you've laid out your soul like a sheet of paper before the Lord and asked Him to write on it. I'm going to say that again. You cannot help but succeed in prayer when you've laid out your soul like a sheet of paper before the Lord and asked Him to write upon it, His will upon it. Because then it's no longer just your prayer, it's a prayer of the Holy Spirit. Here's Romans 8, 27, 26, 27. Listen to this. This is extraordinary. This, either this is true or it's not. We know it's true, but it's so extraordinary that it just knocks you off your feet. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Do you, do you get that? The Holy Spirit, God the Spirit, intercedes before God 
the Father, and he prays for us, he intercedes for us, takes our weak prayer, intercedes for us with groanings that can't be uttered. He becomes your secretary, as it were, except that this secretary takes what you've written and does it 10 million times better, if I can put it that way. And he who searches the hearts knows, this is God the Father, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The breath of God returning to himself. And at such a time when you pray, you do not need to say, I hope. Don't need to say that because God is pledged to answer your prayer. And if the Holy Spirit teaches you to pray, it's as certain as two and two makes four that you're going to be answered. Prayer can turn everything upside down in the most wonderful way for us if we know what it's about and if we pray in the Spirit. Well, let me close now by giving you an encouragement to prayer. My brothers and sisters, we've got a lot to pray about. But the situation of the world right now is incredibly dangerous. It really is. I think a world war, the next one, has already begun. We're in real tough shape with regard to the world situation. We have so much to pray about. We pray about our missionaries in foreign fields. We pray for their courage and their safety. Uh, we got a call just this morning from Max and found out that my niece, uh, whose name is Tracy, um, the daughter of my sister, died. And she, highly intelligent girl, she was a lawyer, but about 20 years ago, it's been a long time, she got some kind of a disease that caused pain. And the pain didn't stop, didn't stop, didn't stop. And finally she died. Well, she's in a good place now. But what I'm saying is, we ought to pray, Gail and I do. We pray for my sister Jeanette, that she might be comforted. We have a lot to pray about. There's always something. You could get up here and tell me something right now. All of you could, that you want to pray about or need to pray about. And yet, how is it that I feel that we don't really get it sometimes? Is it that we have nothing to pray for? Don't we have any children to pray for? Don't we have any husbands or wives to pray for? Don't we have any friends to pray for? Do you live in Perth and there's nothing to pray for? When then and where do you live? We live in Perth and boy, our city needs to be prayed for. Not pray, no, no, we must pray. My friends, if you love Jesus, if you love Jesus, you're gonna pray. You need to be careful and beware that if you refuse to pray now, in these coming days, well, you may find yourself in difficulties that you can't get out of. What I'm saying is this, may the Lord give us a blessing. We can all pray that. Our church, may the Lord give us a blessing. He must send it, or our hearts are going to break. They're going to break. We feel the blessing is coming. We think that there's something on the way. We've grasped the promise. We pleaded with Jehovah, and we pleaded, pleaded the blood of the Lord Jesus. We did that just now when we had the Lord's Supper. And we can expect an answer from God. We can rely on it. As Christians, we do not seek the face of God in vain. So we have a lot to anticipate. We have a lot to be hopeful for. But do let us join together. Let us join together as a congregation to pray in the Holy Spirit. God bless you, everyone. Amen.